Welcome to the monthly meeting of Watershed Action Alliance of Southeastern Massachusetts as we learn about regional environmental justice issues, groups, and solutions. Today's guest speaker is Sabrina Davis. She has worked for the Coalition for Social Justice since 2017 as the organizer for Fall River. She also runs the Fall River chapter of Indivisible. Sabrina is knowledgeable about a wide range of local, regional, and statewide social and environmental justice issues. Today, she will speak about state environmental justice legislation and what groups can do to help move it along. Social and environmental justice projects in Fall River and environmental topics of concern in the area. Thank you, Sabrina. Okay, so um, the Coalition for Social Justice, uh, we're dedicated to building a grassroots movement for a progressive social changes viewed through, through a race and gender lens rooted in excluded communities that have been excluded from the economic benefits of the current system. So just a preface for what I do environmentally, it has to, it's uh, geared more towards um, social justice more than individual um, environmental focuses. Um, the current thing that we're, we're trying to get past and have been trying to get past is environmental justice. And I'll start off with what is environmental justice? Um, it's a set of principles that support protecting, protection from environmental pollutants and the ability to live and enjoy a clean and healthful environment, regardless of race, color, income, class, handicaps, gender, identity, sexual orientation, national origin, ethnicity, ancestry, religious beliefs, or English language proficiency, which includes the meaningful involvement of all people with respect to development, implementation, enforcement of environmental laws, regulation, and policies, including, including climate change. And the equitable and distribution of energy and environmental be benefits and environmental burdens. <laughs> now, that was taken directly from, from the bill. Uh, I have, uh, it's on as an amendment. Um, and uh, it will drop the amendment of the, the number of the bill. Sorry about that. The number of the bill and the number of the amendment later on at the end so I can make sure that everybody gets it. Uh, the history of environmental justice in Ma Massachusetts is that our former Massachusetts governor, Deval Patrick, signed an executive order for environmental justice on November 25th, 2014. And his order was aimed at protecting vulnerable populations such as low income, community of col color, and individuals who speak English as a second language, <laughs> who all too often bear the brunt of the environmental burdens here in Massachusetts. The most unfortunate thing here is that the executive order was never fully realized, which is why the social justice, environmental, and faith-based groups from across Massachusetts have come together to pass equitable legislation for environmental justice. Now, after uh, looking at your uh, website, um, how this bill primarily relates to uh, the work you do at South Coast Watershed Alliance is that the environmental justice bill it, aim is to protect natural resources and communities that have been historically overburdened by pollution. The people who are most likely to live next to dirty power plants, or in this case, polluted waterways, are people of color, uh, low-income people, and those residents who speak English as a second language. Uh, one, of the, one of the natural resources that are covered under this bill is, in fact, water. Um, the most perfect example of when CSJ um, took an action on a water issue. So I don't know if anybody's uh, familiar with the water sale that happened here in Fall River. Um, 
a couple years back. This happened in 2017. Our illustrious former mayor, Jay Zell Carrere, and the Watapa Water Board approved the contract to sell our drinking water to a proposed frac gas power plant in Burville, Rhode Island, in a backroom deal. I found out about this only after a Herald News reporter caught wind of it in the newspaper, and then we promptly got to work. Um, I ended up attending a lot of water board meetings and city council meetings, testifying against the water sale. We also called our CSJ members here in Fall River and informed them about the water sale and asked them to take action and participate in the meetings with us. CSJ reached out to coalition partners like Clean Water Action and Community Action Works for help. We turned out to protests and solidarity solidarity with other concerned Fall River residents and held our own event. At the end of it all, a resolution was passed not only condemning the water sale, but also to not renew the contract with the power plant after it expired. And there is a happy ending to the story because Bur the power plant in Burville, Rhode Island was never built. The proposal for the power plant was rejected last year in June and the moral of this story is that people power works. The latest on, envi on the environmental justice bill is that um, it's currently on as an amendment to the Roadmap to 2050 bill. Um, the Roadmap to 2050 bill is H. 4912 and the amendment number for EJ is 52. Um, the reason why we had this done is that the roadmap bill was uh, going up for a vote way sooner than ours was. And so by putting out an amendment guaranteed uh, more chances that it would be uh, passed this year. Um, what you can do to help pass this along is that you can call your local legislators to when this bill comes out of the committee, which it will, it's currently in House Ways and Means to reconcile the differences between the House and Senate bill. This is going to come up for a vote. So by calling your local legislators, your representatives, your state senators, and telling them how important this is to you, it really does help get the bill passed. They want to hear from their constituents. They want to do what they're, uh, what is important to their constituents. And after you do that, get your friends and family to do the same. Because people power really does work. And one of the most amazing things that I always tell people is that it only takes 10 people to call in to a particular legislator for them to start taking notice. These people unfortunately don't uh, interact with their legislators on a regular basis, um, unfortunately. And this is a shame because that's how you can help shape the laws in your, in your state. Um, let me pull you back up so I can see everybody's beautiful face. Um, I am by no means an absolute expert on water issues, but I will tell you some uh, more notable things. Um, one of the one of the campaigns my uh, coalition partner is working on is on something called PCBs, and um, this is a water contaminant. It's very insidious, and you might wonder where the PCBs come from? Well, I can tell you the mo one of the most common sources are receipts. And it has all kinds of horrible uh, health impacts to people. Um, so that's something that you guys should really look at as, a, as something to take up. And uh, you can start with yourselves. Um, by just not 
taking receipts. Whenever they ask you, oh, would you like your receipt? Would you like a text to you? Would you like it emailed to you? Have it texted or emailed to you. You don't want to touch it. And um, maybe inform your, the cashiers that they don't want to touch it either. Um, for like more water issues, our coalition pa partner, Clean Water Action, that's who I always go, go to for a lot of information on water issues. Um, I can think of a, one more example of a local issue here in Fall River, um, and that's the rail trail um, when they were trying to build an easement on that. And that project was really great for that area, the waterways in that area, it was cleaned up. Um, I have to say, being on that trail, I remember walking by it and it used to smell. So that to have that like be taken back from the people of Fall River would, would have been just horrible. And that's also like Mayor J. Sell, gone off the slate. So hooray for that. Um, are there any questions? Yeah, so here's your opportunity to have ask Sabrina some questions about um, uh, both about uh, state legislation and also what she's been working on in Fall River. Um, although, please repeat <laughs> me the bill number. The bill number? Okay. Let me get that into the chat, like I said I was, but it is. Uh, I, I have 4912 is what I wrote down. Yeah. Um, H4192. Yes. 4912, sorry. Yes, let me copy that. Yeah, good idea to have it in writing. <laughs> and I'm going to plop that in. Sabrina, could you mention what was those, the name of the bill again? It's uh, the bill that the EJ is an amendment on is the Roadmap to 2050 bill. It's an environmental. Yeah. Um, okay. Bill, um, it, this is something that's been uh, worked on through the governor's office, through the state house, and it has to do with a resolution to get to um, carbon neutral by 2050. So that is the. Other questions? Remember to unmute yourself. Sabrina, are you doing any work at all on water conservation as part of your mandate? We've run into uh, Plymouth just asking for more well, pumping from the, DEP rather than one of the uh, things doing that, conservation. Um, we do support and we are working on is mass saves. Um, hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good program that's already in effect and encouraging people to take advantage of that. That's awful. Um, water conservation and... Oh, sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. Um, one of the things is that I've, re I've recently done was that it's done an op-ed. Mm. Oh, am I? Hold on, let me try to... You're good now, you're good now. My internet, it's saying my internet is unstable you all okay um the the what i'm working on with the whole mass save thing is that um the issue is it doesn't benefit low-income people at all but they're paying for it and the people who are getting the benefit for it are people who own their own homes right so that's a little bit um unbalanced and um, from a personal experience, I've been very critical about this. And, and Fall River here, we have a large Portuguese community. My landlord is Portuguese. He does not speak English. I tried to tell him about this program. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they gave great um, rebates for reinsulating the house and different other things. And um, so he went to go call. And when he hit the button for Portuguese, um, he got nothing, got nothing. And this is um, 
a very common complaint. A couple years ago, they review, reviewed um, mass saves, and it's probably going to be up for another review. And um, they couldn't get out of there fast enough because there's a lot of angry people <laughs> at that meeting. And it was held at BCC um, who haven't seen the benefits. I'm like, why am I paying for something that I can't access? And there are other issues where people who um, try to access the benefits couldn't. So he put in this water, one guy put in his water heater, he never got the rebate to. Um, so there's a lot of issues with that program itself. Um, Opt-ads are great, are great tools. Um, writing letters to the editor, a uh, good tip I can give about that is uh, keeping it short and a bit pithy um, so that way it's uh, interesting for the editor. It's more likely to get in. Um, and um, there are a number of different platforms you can get involved with di different environmental issues. And it, they're all connected. Like soil health is very important, important for our water sources, right? Because the water drains through the soil. Um, I will give you an example of a New Bedford issue, right? There are places, uh, places in New Bedford that it's an ordinance where you cannot dig or plant or do anything in that soil because it's toxic. So the water, when it drains down through it, you can only imagine uh, water is a great vehicle for uh, many different things. Toxins is one of them. Um, and a lot of this is just awareness. People just don't know. And like, I don't know if you guys have a Facebook page, but one of the things that we have been doing lately is doing like short little videos, informal videos and uh, about different issues. And uh, people love that. And it's accessible and it's bite-sized. Um, if you try to um, do something that's over like 15 minutes from my own experience people are not going to watch it to the beginning so like keeping it to five to ten minutes and keeping it on one top topic one uh, little frame of reference is the best you can do for that and just share widely um, putting it on different platforms putting it on youtube um, all these things are like very helpful for getting the message out. And the more people know, the more you're able to get them to help you. Uh, Henrietta? Yeah, yes, uh, this is to go back to what you were saying about New Bedford and the soil. I was just, I wanted to, if you could just tell us why the soil is so polluted, why the injunction <sighs> against digging into that soil. Do you know uh -huh. what? God, it? it just depends. There's a like, there's a lot of different like Superfund sites in New Bedford. Mm. Um, some of it's from yeah. industry in the yeah. past. Yeah. Um, I couldn't possibly name the chemicals. Yeah. Um, they're very technical. Yeah. Um, but it was industrial pollution, probably from textile plants. Probably. Yeah. And others, there have been other industries in, in New Bedford. This, here's a gone. very particular question. Yeah. Are cranberry, is the cranberry industry involved in, in New Bedford? Is that one of the sources of ongoing chemical nutrient pollution? Just I would here. say that that is, would be a question for my partners, mm. uh, Clean Water Action. Mm. Um, I have not heard this complaint uh, myself mm. or when I was doing research or continue, I do continue research on this. I've only mm -hmm. been, I had this uh, environmental campaign for a year, so I still have a lot to learn. I see. Um, yeah. But as far as I'm aware of, um, the more prominent things that have been mentioned is past industry yeah. pollution. Yeah. And there is a current thing that we're uh, looking at environmentally is the bio waste facility up in New Bedford. Mm. Um, it's not technically in an environmental justice area, but would have a larger impact on areas all around there. And in regards to access, 
um, there's was a brand new park that was just built, and the where it's decided uh, to be is near that park. So what kid is going to want to go play in a playground that smells like crap? Mm-hmm. And they're going to be trucking it? Okay, and some of those trucks, for one, are not closed. So that's pretty disgusting, and we're talking about runoff. Mm. Like, can you imagine having a sewage sloshed? I mean, some of it will be more solid for sure, but there's also liquid waste and they plan on trucking it from other areas. So it's mm-hmm. just spreading every crap everywhere, literally. Mm. And um, so that's another issue that we're currently looking up and in, into in New Bedford. And thankfully our biggest boon and our biggest curse was this coronavirus because it pretty much halted mm. um, the building that plant um, which they were already in the process of building. And, um, part of that is another environmental issue, not surrounded by, um, that's not really currently related to the watershed, uh, work that you guys are doing. Um, I would say another issue um, that has been worked on through CSJ is the Buzzards Bay um, group. And this was done before my time. Mm-hmm. And they had some success getting stuff cleaned up. Is there any other questions? Sabrina, have you, have you thought of writing up just a, a small little sample letter for you people to send to congressmen? I mean, if, the, if you make it terminally simple for them to do they'll they're more likely to do it that wouldn't take much of your time and you'd be able to put the wording exactly the way you wanted it oh yeah we uh coalitions across board we share um resources and that's definitely been something that we've done and sent um what the best advice i can say is that they're easy, but they don't make as good as an impact as somebody writing from them themselves from their heart, because somebody has to look through all those, and it's painfully obvious to see that they're all the same, mm. right? And then then they just blow it off. Mm. So like bullet po- providing bullet points to people to write their own letter, that would be use more useful than sending a carbon copper copy. Yep, that makes sense. Um, Sabrina, oh, you're on mute now. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I just lost connection real quick. Oh, okay. Then a carbon copy letter. And this is something that I got directly from the uh, a friend of mine and the uh, legislator, Jim Hawkins. Um, I have a really good relationship with him. Um, so, um, yes, I can do that. Yes, we have done that. And um, it's just more effective if we can get people to write stuff from their own heart. Yeah, we appreciate that. That's something we try to do. Um, We had a a legislator's breakfast scheduled for earlier this year. Unfortunately, we had to cancel it. But part of it was taking people to meet their own legislators and tell their own stories. Yeah, so that's a very good point in terms of letters. Other questions? Anyone? You can still do that. Um, one of the things that this uh, virus has taught us is new ways to reach out to our legislator and new, uh, like new sort of platforms, like photo petitions, having people write signs and take a picture with their own sign, um, how, doing short videos, two minute videos and sending them to legislators. Um, these are all tools that you can use um, to help reach out to your legislator. And um, really putting a name to a face to an issue really stays with them. And, I, and the most clear example that I can give you is um, not from my environmental work, but from paid family and medical leave, oh, this story. So it was a 
father and a daughter who spoke. The daughter was very young. Her mother um, had terminal cancer and had passed. And she wasn't able to spend the the her uh, with her the, her final moments. He wasn't able to be there for her because he was forced to work um, during that time and. He wasn't able to give the kind of support that his daughter needed um, because he had to work. There was no leave. Um, and there was not a dry eye in that room. Yeah, I definitely think that's something that we can uh, learn from is, is using those stories and um, yeah, especially emotionally touching stories and with kids involved, yeah, I appreciate that. Well, before we move on to the rest of our meeting, any more questions, Topher? Yeah, uh, this yep. is not a question, but a thank you, Sabrina. Um, a lot of groups uh, in Rhode Island worked on that Burrillville power plant proposal, which would have been really, really bad for um, our watershed. And I just wanna, I wanna thank you the, the issue of water sales and moving water around was a really important one. And um, what, what, uh, what you did was a big deal in terms of turning the tide on that proposal.